these are difficult times, but one important step for the ESM and for banking union was taken yesterday. The ESM treaty was signed by our member states, with the exception of Estonia, they have a new government, but they uh, made it very clear they will sign soon. Politically, all this was agreed last November, December by the Eurogroup, the Euro Summit, but yesterday was an important legal step so that we can now begin the ratification process because the ESM treaty is an international treaty. Um, it was adopted by parliaments of all our 19 member states to change the treaty. Um, again, these 19 parliaments have to um, ratify it. The main changes are that we will be authorized to provide a backstop to the re single resolution fund. Um, so for bank resolution, as you know, they are building up their own funds. Um, but in a big crisis, that may not be enough. In other countries like the FDIC in the US, they have a credit line with the US Treasury. We don't have a Treasury in the Euro area. So the ESM was asked to provide um, the service so we will set up this backstop for the um, SRF. The other main changes of the ESM treaty um, are things like um, revamping our toolbox, precautionary credit lines will become easier to use. And it has been clarified that if there were another uh, major adjustment loan needed for our member states, then in the future, the ESM would um, work very much together with the European Commission to negotiate and monitor such a program, something that was done in the past by the Troika, Klaus. which no longer exists. Klaus, I think in part you may have answered my question, anticipating the obvious question which I ask you on a regular basis, is has this changed the stigma attached to accessing the ESM? And I think in part you answered that because taking, talking about the credit lines being easier to use. Yeah, stigma is, is, um, has several meanings. Um, it's very clear that there's no stigma in the markets. That has been confirmed again and again by market participants. Um, and that's often what people understand when they hear stigma. But one could argue that there's a political stigma. In some countries, um, governments are reluctant to, to use the ESM because um, they think there's conditionality attached, so painful reforms. And I think you refer to our latest facility that was um, adopted last May and which is available to all our member states has not been used. But because it's a precautionary credit line, that's fine. It's available and markets know that, countries know that. And this has already helped to calm down markets. It's something that the International Monetary Fund also offers to its member states, precautionary credit lines that are available when needed. But this political stigma um, may be there in some countries, but I think with the ESM treaty reform, that's also a good way to get out of that. Um, Klaus, let's talk about political stigma. You're a, a man who understands um, capital markets and funding. The um, AFME, the trade body for Europe's wholesale capital markets, thinks there's a potential 600 billion euro hole in company balance sheets as a result of the pandemic. Which capital market are they going to be able to go to to fund that hole, given mm. that the EU is unwilling to give equivalents to London, the deepest capital market in Europe? I don't know whether that is a key problem here. Um, let me first say there's a lot of uncertainty. I cannot confirm any number um, what is a possible hole for the corporate sector. But it's clear that the pandemic and the way it's playing out and the lockdowns last longer. Um, it's not only now um, as a result that fiscal deficits go up and public debt. Um, also, many, many companies, the corporate sector um, will suffer because some do very well because of the pandemic. Others suffer, particularly in the travel industry, obviously restaurants, hotels, airlines. Um, and there will be... Um, um, problems in the balance sheets. And up to now, much of that is um, taken up by guarantees or liquidity provision by governments, but that will run out eventually. And I don't think anybody has a good estimate at the moment how big that problem will be, um, but there will be insolvencies, there will be um, balance sheet problems. Um, some of the corporate um, problems might 
be need to be taken over by by the public sector, then that would again increase public deficits. So I think it's good to be prepared for that. But um, I think it's too early to know um, what the precise numbers are. You have um, fast feet when it comes to avoiding the politics of, of Europe and getting the ESM mired in some of the national level debates. But you have been targeted in this row in Italy. Matteo Renzi wanted to draw the um, ESM into financial support for uh, post-pandemic spending. And that's part of the reason that the Conte government fell. How do you feel about now getting dragged into the politics of Italy? Well, in a way, we are always um, dragged into politics of our member states. That's not unusual. Um, when I think back 10 years and we provided loans to Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain and Cyprus, we were very much um, um, in the middle of politics in these countries. Um, we tried to be helpful. That's why we were created, um, to help countries. Um, right now, we, of course, are in a different situation. We um, um, created this new facility in response to the crisis, what we call pandemic crisis support could be up to 2% of each member state's um, GDP. But it's a precautionary credit line. Whether countries use it or not, they have to decide themselves. Um, it's not surprising that there are debates about that. I think in Italy, there are also very um, intense debates how to use the money that can come from the next generation EU provided or channeled via the European Commission which is a lot more money than what the ESM can provide, and it also includes grants. And there's a big debate on that. And there should be a debate, because it's a lot of money that is available. And it's very important that it's used well, because the intention of this um, um, facility is very clear, um, to promote growth through more investment and reforms. Um, and Italy potentially can get more money out of that than any other country in the EU. This is a once in a lifetime chance. And it's very important that the money is used well. And therefore, to have a debate on that, it, it would be worrying if it were other if it were different.